Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. We've been wandering around the forest, round two, for a while now, and I think it's just about time to move on, because there used to be a mannequin in a wheelchair right here that was missing most of its parts. We found all five of its body parts in a bunch of wells around this area. Two up here, one down here, one down here, and one down here. Reassembled it, and it um, did some disturbing, unnerving stuff. Moved out of the way and revealed a staircase right here in the burning wreckage of Wish House. So let's go down. Just one thing I want to mention, something that I... I always kind of noticed this, but I, like, I never really stopped and thought too much about it. Let's just look at our pickaxe of despair for a minute. It's a very unnerving weapon. There's two things about it. Actually, mm, there's three things about it. One, it has a red head. Like, why is the pickaxe head red? I've never seen a pickaxe with a colored head. Maybe it's common, but it's always been neutral colored. Just whatever the color of the metal is. This one's red, almost like it's covered in blood or something. The other thing is that the size of the axe head compared to the handle is totally out of whack. The head is so big, but the handle's not that long. Just feels weird. Part of that reason might be that it looks like part of the handle has actually been filed off. That's kind of hard to see because Henry's hand is over it, but the very bottom of the handle is just filed to a sharp point, like a spear, like a stake. So it's this weird, like, red, blood red pickaxe with a head that's too large, and it looks like I'm meant to kill vampires with it if I wanted to. It's very weird. All right, let's go down. Oh, I was expecting a cutscene or something. Ooh. It's been a while since I've seen that symbol so just clearly put here. It's not all weird looking, it's not faded. Like, it's a very good copy of the symbol. Uh, looks like some kind of Bible. The Descent of the Holy Mother, the 21 Sacraments. The first sign, and God said... Oh, I think that's like the title of this part. The first sign. And God said, the time of fullness, cleanse the world with my rage. Gather forth the white oil, the black cup, and the blood of the ten sinners. Prepare for the ritual of the holy assumption. The second sign. And God said, Offer the blood of the ten sinners and the white oil. Be then released from the bonds of the flesh and gain the power of heaven. From the darkness and void bring forth gloom and gird thyself with despair for the giver of wisdom. Just that word, seeing that word despair there just makes me think of the pickaxe of despair. Hmm. I was gonna say that there's probably no connection, but actually there could be. The third sign. And God said, return to the source through sin's temptation. Under the watchful eye of the demon, wander alone in the formless chaos. Only then will the four atonements be in alignment. Yeah, so this third sign, this is what we read before in that little scrap that we read from Wish House before it burned down. We had this part, and it mentions the four placards that we put in our our wall in the laundry room. The Source, the Watchful Eye, Temptation, and Chaos. That was the four atonements that we did. The last sign. And God said, separate from the flesh too, she who is the mother reborn, and he who is the receiver of wisdom. I just had a horrible thought. Um, if this be done by the mystery of the 21 sacraments, the mother shall be reborn, and the nation, nation of sin shall be redeemed. Fuck. I'm just, like, playing right into Walter Sullivan's hands. I'm... I'm just bringing forth that fucking demon mother thing again. I'm giving birth to the demon, just not through the same means as the first and the third game, where it's trying to go through Alessa slash Heather. 
it's what we're doing. Descent of the Holy Mother, 21 sacraments in your scrapbook. So let's analyze this. There's a lot of horrible things in here to talk about. Yeah, this is all fitting together. Okay, so analyze this first one. The first sign. Um, gather forth the white oil, the black cup, and the blood of the ten sinners. Prepare for the ritual of the Holy Assumption. So this was the first ten victims they're talking about here. The first sign, right? This is like the first start of this ritual to summon the god, the, the mother, the demon. First part of it is all these things. The black cup, the white oil, plus blood of the ten sinners. So that was the first ten victims. I don't know what the white oil or the black cup are. Probably not important. The second sign. That would be round two, I guess. Offer the blood of the ten sinners and the white oil. Actually, no, that's part of the same ritual, right? I don't think that's another ten sinners. It sounds like it's just saying what to do with what you gathered in the first sign. So it's still the first ten victims. So after offering the blood of the ten victims and all that, be then released from the bonds of the flesh and gain the power of heaven. Okay, this probably explains why Walter Sullivan was able to kill themselves and yet still somehow be alive, kind of. I mean, they seem to be alive as their kid form and also as their older form, all at the same time while having killed themselves in their jail cell. I think that's how. They were released from the bonds of the flesh. I don't know what the power of heaven is, but sounds like they could die without really dying. Yeah, released from the bonds of the flesh. Maybe just like how that weird copy of Walter Sullivan that I keep encountering, that kind of, like you can sort of knock it out temporarily, but if you leave and come back, it's just right back up again. Maybe it's kind of like that. They kill themselves for a while, even to the point where they were buried. Right? Like number 11, that casket, that was buried. They were in it. But then after a while, they just woke back up and they got out of that casket. So maybe they can temporarily be stopped, but this releasing from the bonds of the flesh means that they will come back. They're, they're immortal, I guess. Seems like it. I don't think... I mean, release from the bonds of the flesh also sort of sounds like they're a ghost, but... They don't, they're not behaving ghost-like at all. We've seen ghosts. They're not a ghost. From the darkness and void, bring forth gloom. Gird thyself with despair for the giver of wisdom. I don't know what that refers to. However, uh, in this third sign, return the source through sin's temptation, etc., etc. I mean, we did that part of the ritual for them, right? We put those placards in our wall. We did that. We put the four atonements in alignment. So we've just helped them along. And the last sign. God said separate from the flesh to she who is the mother reborn and he who is the receiver of wisdom. Okay, I don't know how, but I guess Eileen must be the mother reborn. I mean, it's gotta be. It's talking about these two people and I'm definitely the receiver of wisdom for reasons that I'll talk about in a second. With that being true, the Mother Reborn would have to be Eileen. I don't know how, but she's the Mother Reborn. And the reason I say I'm the receiver of wisdom is because remember what was carved on the, uh, the doll in the wheelchair before I reassembled it? Actually, let's read that. Weir wheelchair doll text. Um, Though my body be destroyed, I will not let you pass here. To prepare for the receiver of wisdom, I cut my body into five pieces and hid them in the darkness. When my body is once again whole, the path to below will be opened. If you if you are the receiver of wisdom, you'll understand my words. Well, I mean, we understood them. We did the thing. We passed their test, right? It's a, like a test that's only supposed to be passable by the receiver of wisdom. Hence, we are the receiver of wisdom. Whoa. I just realized you don't have to go back to the menu to switch to switch notes. You can actually press the uh, the bumpers and switch between them. So, yeah. Mother Reborn, Eileen, Receiver of Wisdom, me. If this is done. By the mystery of the 21 sacraments. 
21 sacraments. Wait, how many victims has there been again? I forgot how many we've had. Either we've had 20 or 21. I don't remember which. I mean, that's kind of the weird thing, right? Because it seemed like Walter Sullivan tried to kill. I mean, they definitely tried to kill Eileen. Eileen almost died. It seems like an accident that they didn't. So, actually, yeah, wait. They tried to kill, who I'm now calling the Mother Reborn, but failed by accident. And they're obviously trying to kill the Receiver of Wisdom, me, because, I mean, they keep appearing as an apparition or whatever, trying to kill me with a gun and a chainsaw and a pipe, and, like, they're trying to murder both of us. Why do they want to kill the Mother Reborn and the Receiver of Wisdom? Separate... Oh, wait, here's why. Separate from the flesh, too. The Mother Reborn and the Receiver of Wisdom. Separate from the flesh, I guess, means kill them, right? That's where they want to kill us. We have... To okay, so we have to die to complete this ritual. That's good. If we don't die, then we might be okay. We've helped them along in some ways, but we can hurt them just by not dying. <laughs> but anyway, in the end, if it does complete, the mother shall be reborn and the nation of sin shall be redeemed. That would be the demon thing that I think we saw before. Okay. Yeah, wow, there's a lot in there. I just tied a lot of things together for me. It's locked. There's a round depression about 10 inches wide here. Gee, I wonder what that could be used for. I put that away, didn't I? Oh, no, I still have it. Good. You put the crested medallion into the depression. So it seems like we're going down, it seems to be like a, I don't want to say the word formula, it seems to be, uh, I don't know what the word would be, but it does seem to be the sort of formula. Uh, that's a sheep. Why is there a sheep there? Huh. The formula seems to be go down. Will probably be a hole off to the side here that I can use to go home right before the final door at the bottom, and the final door at the bottom will take me to the next place, where we have a changed version of a place that we've already been to, and we need to, uh, I guess, pin down the ghost of whoever died there, the victim of who died there. The one for this one to be something DeSalvo, Andrew DeSalvo. Don't go too far ahead. Sorry, I've just been walking the whole time. Yeah, there's all these like tableaus off to the side as you walk down. Be down there. Nothing good. So this is Yeah, this is gonna be the watery prison world, and then the one after this would be the apartment world. What a weird nasty room. The hell's wrong with the walls? Oh, I can't even access a map yet. That's weird. Oh, that's where we came from. This is where we go? such a cool and weird way to enter this place. So now we finally get to be inside of the thing around the sluice gates that I was never able to enter before. 
Oh, it's so cool how you go back to locations and things change and like things that you kind of looked at like side eyed, like what is that for? Huh? Kind of weird. And then you forget about it because it wasn't that big of a deal usually. But then you come back to it and it's like, oh, that's what that's for. That's what that's for. That's where that goes. One thing I definitely haven't forgotten about, though, and I'm curious what they're going to do with it. It's so damp and gross here. That's very true. Big mood. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that cracked me up. <laughs> um, they're probably going to do something, now that we're here again, with that... Uh, remember down in the basement? Near the... Not the generator. Near the... Uh, I don't know, and you're a thing that spins next to the water wheel. Turbine, that's the name of it. Next to the turbine, there's that weird room with that massive door. Like, a door that looks like it's made for a giant. And it was never able to do anything with it. And it was in just this huge room that looked like you were supposed to do something, but... I couldn't. I'm curious what they're gonna do with that. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to go home yet. Oh, Jesus! Fuck! Are you okay, Eileen? Where did they go? Where did they go? Did they run out of breath? Yeah, get him, Eileen. Oh, no. Oh, oh my god. Dual wielding, what the hell? No, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. What am I doing? Like, why am I even doing this? What's the point? I know they're just gonna come back. There's no, there's no point in fighting them. They're totally pointless. Just leave. Please don't follow me. Ah! Fuck! Alright, so we, we gotta go away enough that uh, they'll stop following me. I need to heal as well. Come on, Eileen. Um... Oh, I was gonna say I could take the ladders down, because the ladders are shortcuts, but Eileen can't take the ladders. Alright, just calmly walk. It's fine. It's fine. See? Everything's fine. Eileen, don't try to attack anything, okay? Just keep moving. Oh no, oh, no what? Yeah, me too. Um, hmm. Is there any real reason to go? I, I guess while I'm here, I should go into the third floor. There's probably going to be new stuff there. I'll probably have to anyway. Okay, l let's see if Walter follows me. I don't think they come into the room when you can see the door, so... Ah! I gotta say, Eileen's got some guts, huh? I'm scared to death of those things, and she's just like, yeah, I got a broken arm and a chain, and I'm in heels and a dress. I'm just gonna go whip this monster. Good job, Eileen. She took down one of them. That chain's pretty good, and yeah. <sighs> okay, is there gonna be anything different in any of these rooms? Is there any point in going in all these? Like, there could be some random bit of ammo. 
That's how it was in the forest world. Like you visited places you've been before and there's like health drinks and whatnot all around. Like there's a note here. Oh wait, there's a candle. Oh, that's actually super important. There's at least uh, one, two, th there <laughs> there's at least four curses at my home. Now that I think about it. Well, I'll take care of one. Yay. Uh, yeah, this writing's probably something we've read before, right? Now it'll look like I'm sleeping. Yeah. So I don't think there's going to be any new notes, but new items. Hi? Why do they turn around every time they try to attack at first? Have you noticed that? They swing and they, like, turn around. I gotta be... Being realistic, I really shouldn't be using this axe. I'm using it because it's interesting. And if you get a hit off, it does do a crap ton of damage, but it's so slow. Like, you saw what happened there. If I get hit at any point during that extremely long animation, it cancels the entire attack. It's like... One... Two... It's like about two full seconds to get the attack off. It's not good. Next time I go home, I'm gonna... Grab my axe. I'll keep the despair thing on me, though. Hmm. I wish the map, since we're here the second time, refreshed to say that, uh... Like, to show you that you haven't been in these rooms. That'd be nice, because now I don't know which ones I've been in and which ones I haven't. Because this one's gray here, this hole, that tells me I haven't been... Wait, that just means I haven't been down the hole, right? Not that I haven't been in the room. Yeah, so that doesn't even tell you much, I think. But I'll bring you back if I find something. Whoa. Oh, shit. I didn't think that reached me. So, I've just noticed that this is a different variety of those things. They're not flesh-colored, they're... Bluish, grayish, and they got things on their heads. Found some pistol ammo, too. So we got a candle up here and pistol ammo. Alright, let's head further down. Don't know if Walter's still after us. But I don't think I want to stop and find out. This is hands down my favorite level. Nice. Didn't even hit. Just so cool and atmospheric. Okay, this is becoming a problem. Get, get out of my way. I really need to heal super bad. I'm just walking. something I'm worried what's on our right notice how Eileen is looking over there they're looking at something what is it I don't have much health so uh, let's actually so oh hi <laughs> damn it Oh! I mean, obviously it's the Silent Hill cult, yeah. But wait. Wait. Is this...? This is the cell that Walter Sullivan talked about being put in if they didn't, like, read well enough or whatever. This is the cylindrical cement tower. But... 
Weird. I thought, okay, I thought it was like on the property of the wish house, like somewhere nearby. This is just like in the ether somewhere. Like it exists nowhere. I, I didn't put two and two together because it, like, I thought it would just be on the property. But this is definitely that place, isn't it? It's gotta be. Also, it looks like enemies are just generally getting harder. Uh, the the, uh, the leeches look like they're super fast now. God, the reach on it's really bad. <laughs> Satisfying, but pointless. Um, hmm. Like, I really need to go heal, but I guess I'll just hope that I find a healing thing somewhere in here. Meh. Nope. Bad place. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> I died from stepping on a leech. Okay, there's a lot of those monsters around here, so if I want to survive this, I'm just going to have to use some revolver ammo. It'll be fine. I have, um, I think, six more revolver shots back at home. It's not like it's super precious to have them. I'd like to keep some for a boss fight, but it only takes one round to kill one of these things. It's fine. Get it, Eileen, please. I'm not gonna help, because I'll die. Yeah, man. Doing work. Fuck it up, Eileen. I think there's even more. Yep, I see you. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Eileen, help me. Eileen. I don't want to use more ammo, please. Ah, oh, fuck it. That still didn't do it, damn. Don't touch it? Oh, that's my last round, actually. I need to get rid of this torch, too. I don't think it's any use around here. Okay. Oh, actually, it shows them all pretty much as being locked. Okay, I'm pretty sure none of these three rooms have anything in them. Well, two of them have enemies, so I left really quick. But just from a quick glance, I don't think they have anything in them. I could have missed something, but I'm getting the hell out of here. Certainly no health. At least not health that I can get without- Oh! Oh no, they're gonna kill me! One hit and I'm dead. Walter's here! Walter's here! Walter's here! <laughs> This is going to be interesting. Like, I could just go back to the start and just heal, but... How am I alive? My, there we go. And... Oh my god, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Floor one. Okay, and is, is that a hole? Do I see a hole on the map? And a healing drink! Oh. 
Sweet, sweet drink. Something I'm curious about, too. So back at home, we have a lot, a lot of different curses. If you have a couple curses that are near each other and you light one candle, does it take care of both of them? Does it take care of like an entire room worth of curses? Let's go test it. Okay, we're gonna have a crying baby and some other horrible stuff, yeah. I should probably use it in there, I don't know. Maybe not. So here's the thing, just thinking like functionally. Functionally, I want to get rid of the curses that are around things that I need. It's disturbing to wake up and suddenly have a crying baby and the need to get out of that room really quickly before you take damage, but I don't actually need anything in that room. But over here is a save point, uh, the drawer of stuff. So... <clears throat> Yeah, so we got three curses. So what if I put it, like, right here? Let's see if it does anything. Well, it's taking forever to burn down. That's not a good sign. That might mean that it wasn't close enough to anything, but let's see what happens when it disappears. Yeah, it did nothing. Okay. So, it looks like the front door is cursed, and there's a note under there. There's blood coming out of the little peephole. I really want to look in the peephole. I mean, I could go over there, right? Like, it's it's not like you instantly take damage. You got, like, a couple seconds or so. Oh. Oh, it's me. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have looked, huh? I'm going to summarize everything that I've learned about Walter Sullivan so far. He was born right here in room 302 of South Ashfield Heights. His parents abandoned him soon afterwards and disappeared somewhere, leaving the baby alone. He was discovered and sent to St. Jerome's, St. Jerome's Hospital. He was adopted by Wish House, an orphanage in the forest near Silent Hill that's run by the secret Silent Hill religious cult. When he was six years old, someone from the cult showed him where he was born. Since then, he started to believe that room 302 itself, uh, in other words, this, this room, was his mother. Every week, he traveled from the orphanage to South Ashfield Heights, a pretty long trip for a kid his age. Sometimes he took the subway, and sometimes the bus. I, I just want to stop for a second. Since then, he started to believe that room 302 itself was his mother. That's so strange. So they've been looking for... Not somebody in the room, but the room itself? That's so interesting. I guess that's kind of a good thing for me too, because I was worried their mother might be like, in the wall or something. But the room is their mother. Unless the room is actually alive, in which case it's actually worse, because then that means I'm like, inside of an entity, like I'm living inside of it. I don't know. I'm tired. My headache is already killing me. I'll write more tomorrow. July 28th. Oh, that almost killed me. Um, let's get rid of that. And let's heal. Oh, hey. I just realized, now that everything's a lot quieter, the candle that I put down right here, it actually took out the TV as well. So it is possible for it to take out more than one curse, it just has to be quite close. So it can't, like, cure an entire room, but a couple things close to each other, it can do. 
So that leaves us with one, two, and then in my room, three, four. So still four curses. So we had six, now we're down to four. <laughs> Does everything still look normal outside? God, it's so weird. Oh, fucking hell, the head again? Is that the same head? <sighs> I don't know, let's... I'm gonna put a freeze frame in here so you can look at what that head is. It's weird that outside everybody's just going about their lives. I'm going through hell. At least it's quiet in this room now. Still deeply cursed. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to explore more of the water prison world and see if we can find the way out. <laughs>